In 1932, a 13-year-old girl named Sophie Magdalena Scholl joined the German League of Girls with her older sisters, Inge and Elizabeth Scholl. In 1935, Sophie Scholl became a leader of a troop. However, in 1938, Sophie Scholl resigned from her post as group leader due to differences between her and another group leader. Till 1941, Sophie Scholl was a part of the German League of Girls. In the early 1930s, as a teenager, Hans Scholl joined Hitler Youth. Hans Scholl had been a leader and a strong supporter of National Socialists and their actions. However, shortly after his time in Hitler Youth, around 1936, he began questioning the Nazis' actions. Hans Scholl had returned home from the Nuremberg rally with great disappointment. During the rally, Hans had been playing and singing folk songs. Some of the songs were not Nazi-approved, so some of the superiors of that group told him that he wasn't allowed to play them because they were not a part of German culture. Sophie and Hans Scholl were close, so his opinions and feelings affected her as well. As an opponent against the Nazi party, their father, Robert Scholl, was disappointed and tried to fight back with words when his children joined organizations that supported National Socialism. But it didn't matter what their father thought. We just dismissed it. He's too old for this stuff. He doesn't understand. My father had a pacifist conviction and he championed that. That certainly played a role in our education. But we were all excited to join the Hitler Youth in Ulm, sometimes even with the Nazi leadership. Robert Scholl was strongly opposed to the Nazi party. However, he had willingly allowed his family and children to have their opinion on political topics. He allowed each of them to join Hitler Youth and the German League of Girls. In the summer of 1942, five college students and a professor began discussing the current events around them. This group consisted of college students Hans and Sophie Scholl, Alexander Schmorl, Christoph Probst, Willy Graf, and Kurt Huber, a philosophy teacher. When the White Rose Movement first began and started producing leaflets, Robert Scholl was arrested. He was arrested for telling a woman in his office, the war, it is already lost. This Hitler is God's scourge on mankind. And if the war doesn't end soon, the Russians will be sitting in Berlin. After the Scholl's father's arrest, this gave the movement more of a passion and a reason to continue on, despite the obvious risks and dangers resisting the Nazi party. Throughout the summer of 1942 and February 1943, the movement wrote a series of leaflets, each one describing their feelings on National Socialism. Germans, do you and your children want to suffer the same fate that happened to the Jews? Do you want to be measured with the same yardstick as your seducers? Shall we forever be the people hated and ostracized by all the world? No. Cut yourselves off from National Socialist subhumanity. The leaflets were each well described and edited by every member, including Kurt Huber. The first four leaflets were written by Hans Scholl and Christoph Probst. While the fifth leaflet was written by Kurt Huber and the sixth leaflet was written by Hans and Sophie Scholl. After writing the sixth leaflet, the group decided to print more copies. They printed over 3,000 copies and sent them all throughout Munich, and once people got a hold of the leaflets, they also began copying them and distributing the letters. There was a seventh rough draft leaflet that was written by Christoph Probst. As a well-known risk of being caught and executed, the movement continued to write leaflets in secrecy and send them to friends and acquaintances with the same opinion. As a tactic, they also sent the leaflets to themselves to throw the Nazis off their trail. On February 18, 1943, Hans and Sophie Scholl had triumphantly walked into Munich University while classes were in session. They had a suitcase full of leaflets and they walked to the second floor of the building and began scattering leaflets around the floors, on the ledges of the upper floor, in the entrances of classrooms, and around the staircase. Sophie Scholl had shoved a pile of leaflets off of a ledge on the second floor. As they scattered onto the lower floor, students began dispersing from classrooms. The Scholl siblings were spotted, stopped, arrested, and taken to the administrator's office, and eventually to the prison. Although he was not at the scene, Christoph Probst 
was arrested, along with the siblings. The three of them were taken to the Stadelheim prison for three days, and had many interrogations before their trial began. In the beginning, they all used the same story and had almost saved themselves. But Hans Scholl confessed to writing the leaflets. He took all of the blame. This immediately caused Sophie Scholl to admit to her crimes as well. On February 22, 1943, a tragedy struck. The trial of the Scholl siblings and Christoph Probst began. Robert and Magdalena Scholl rushed into the courtroom and began screaming at the judge. They were taken out of the courtroom. Shortly after, Judge Roland Freisler sentenced the three with treason and death. The execution was taken on only a few hours later. Hans and Sophie Scholl got one last meeting with their parents. However, Christoph Probst had no visitors. His wife had just had their third baby and was still in the hospital with childbed fever, postpartum infections. She was not aware he was on trial or that he was being sentenced to death. During Sophie Scholl's visit with her parents, she did not cry, she only smiled. What we did will cause waves. Sophie Scholl was the first to be executed. Christoph Probst was the second to be executed. And lastly, Hans Scholl was executed. Before he was beheaded by the guillotine, his last words were, Long live freedom.